Okay. Uh, good evening again. So we're going to continue with um, the scanning views. I think 99% of uh, individuals who do echoes start with the parasternal long axis view. So we're going to do the same. So again, to get the parasternal long axis view, your transducer is positioned in the third or fourth left intercostal space with the marker pointing towards the right shoulder. And you're going to get a view. You have to adjust it a little bit. And you're going to get something looking like this, OK? So the chest wall is up. You, your, your transducer is located somewhere up here. And there are different, different machines have different symbols to denote the transducer or the probe. Anyways, it's usually up here. Uh, the first structures you're going to encounter, the first structures that the sound wave will encounter um, in, in transit to the heart is going to be the chest wall. So the sound wave will encounter the chest wall. Below that, then you're going to have the subcutaneous tissue. Uh, then below that, you'll have the outermost portion. Uh, the covering of the heart is the pericardium. Below the pericardium, you're going to have the heart. And the heart, the outermost portion of the heart is called the epicardium. You know, we're not going to go into all of that. But uh, you're going to have the, 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 the heart wall. And then when it encounters the heart wall, it's going to encounter the RV wall first. It's the parasternal long axis view that we're talking about. So the RV wall, the RV cavity, someplace right there. This is your ventricular septum, OK? Sorry, this is the RV cavity. It's the RV wall. RV cavity is here. The ventricular septum is right here. The LV cavity, OK? Uh, this is your posterior wall. And these are your cord these are your coordinate tendine or cord. These are the cords, okay? One. Okay, your descending aorta is right here. Okay. The mitral valve, the anterior leaflet, the posterior leaflet. It's your aortic valve. The aortic valve is closed in diastole. Mitral valve is open. This is your aortic root right there, and then the ascending aorta. This is your right ventricular cavity. All right, so again, your transducer is right up here. You put the transducer in the chest wall, right? Right. The, chest, the, the transducer is placed on the chest wall. You produce the sound wave, and the sound wave is going to travel through the chest wall, through the the, the heart muscle into the RV cavity, the ventricular septum, LV cavity, the cords. The cords are attached to the papillary muscles and the posterior wall. Okay, so when we put it in motion, you get something like that. So in systole, the heart contracts. In diastole, it relaxes. In systole, the aortic valve opens. In diastole, it's closed. The mitral valve opens in diastole and closes in systole. OK? OK, good. So what we are, we also, uh, we also tell you that we do certain measurements in diastole and we do certain measurements in systole. So you need to be aware of the diastolic measurements and the systolic measurement. We're going to skip M mode for the time being because we're not doing that yet. But you're going to see we do some M modes. We do some color flow Doppler. We do all different type of Dopplers. OK. So these are all M modes. And we have a separate lecture to go over M modes. And you will fully understand it once we do it. OK.
So we first look at the parasternal lung axis. Okay, we these are color flow Doppler. Again, we're not gonna do that yet. Okay. I'm not a color flow doctor. So what, you, what you're going to realize, we do a lot of Dopplers because Doppler complements two-dimensional echoes. So, you know, we, we do a lot of Dopplers. So measurements now. So remember what we said, you're going to do your measurements either in diastole or systole. This is a diastolic frame because the mitral valve is open, the aortic valve is closed. But you usually, you, we use the, the ECG on the bottom. So the measurements are done at the onset of the QRS. So at the beginning of the QRS, that's, you know, that, that's, that denotes diastole. You measure your posterior wall thickness. That is the thickness of the posterior wall. Then you move from the posterior wall up to the septum, and you measure the LV dimension in diastole. Okay, so LV cavity dimension in diastole, then you measure the septal thickness. So from one side of the septum to the other side, septal thickness. Be careful not to measure cords because you, you will realize that the cords are going to sometimes lie on the, um, the septum. So you don't want to measure the cords, so be careful of that, okay? So your diastolic measurements, posterior wall, LV cavity size in diastole, and the septum. You, uh, you also see we measure the RV cavity in diastole. All right, so still a diastolic frame because the mitral valve is open and the aortic valve is closed. It corresponds to the onset of the QRS. All right, so you just put your marker at the beginning of the QRS, and that is where you're going to do your measurement. Okay, so as, as a, again, we measure the RV cavity size in diastole as well. Um, Okay. So still power storing a long axis view. So the transducers in the third or fourth intercostal space, the marker points towards the uh, right shoulder. Then you move on to your <clears throat> your systolic measurement. So Remember what we said, the aortic root should be measured in diastole, okay? Uh, we used to measure it in systole, but um, it is measured in diastole, okay? So your systolic measurements, your left atrial dimension, so from the leading edge to the leading edge, okay, the size of the left atrium, and you're also going to measure the LV cavity size in systole, okay? Remember, in systole, the aortic valve is open, mitral valve is closed. So 
So you measure the left feature of dimension in systole. Okay, if you need, if there's something of interest, you can zoom. So you need to know the buttons in the machine. So if you want to look closely at the aortic valve or sometime when you want to do measurements, it's best to zoom when you're doing measurements because the arrow is less, all right? The, 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 the um, error in measurement is, is, is much less when you zoom stuff. If something is bigger, it's easier to measure it, okay? So I recommend that you do your measurements in Zoom. So again, the LVOT, left ventricle flow track diameter, is done in systole. You want to, again, this is the aortic valve. So you want to come back about a, a couple or, you know, two, three millimeters away from the aortic valve. And you want to, where you have the tissue blood plane, Tissue blood plane, that is where you're going. So the LVOT diameter, that's a very important measurement when you're going to calculate the aortic valve area. So you have to try and measure that accurately, okay? We're not doing Dopplers. All right, and then your LV cavity size in systole. So this measurement is a little bit off. What you want to do, you want to try and try and be as perpendicular to the tissue as possible. So you're gonna, if you if you're right there, you're gonna try and be uh, perpendicular to the tissue. So you're gonna come straight down like this. Okay. All right, so that would be your LV cavity size in systole. Uh, this is your RV inflow view, RV inflow view, all right? So remember how to get that view. The window that you get your power sterner long axis view, you're just going to pull down your um, transducer, the, the, the angle of the transducer, you're going to pull it down a little bit. and you'll get your RV inflow view. Remember, the, 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 the right atrium is on the bottom, right atrium, right ventricle is right there. This is the posterior leaflet of the tricuspid valve, and this is the anterior leaflet of the tricuspid valve. So let's play it, okay? This is the RA, -R RV, so your tricuspid valve, this is the posterior leaflet right there and the anterior leaflet. This is the LV cavity right there. This is the ventricular septum. So remember, not all your images are gonna look like the textbook uh, images. You have to have a mental picture of what the, the, the correct image are supposed to be, okay? Okay, so remember, we Doppler everything, so. So 
So we again we Doppler everything. So remember that. I'm looking at Doppler. See how many Dopplers there are. All right, so this is your short axis at the level of the aorta. So to get that view, you always start with the parasternal long axis uh, view. So the transducers in the third or fourth in left intercostal space, the mark is towards the right shoulder. You're going to rotate the probe to about the one or two o'clock position, and you're going to pull the handle of the transducer downwards. And you're going to get a view looking like this. This is your aorta with your aortic valve uh, uh, inserted. Okay, you can see when the aortic valve opens, it opens, let me, it opens in a triangular configuration. When it closes, it closes with a Mercedes Benz. Okay. Okay, so this is one cusp, another cusp. Okay, so one, two, three cusp. This is your atrial septum. Atrial septum is right there. The cusp adjacent to the atrial septum is the non coronary cusp. This is the right and that is the left. See, when it opens, it opens in a fall, in a triangular uh, configuration. Okay, triangular, non-coronary cusp, right and the left. And when it closes, it closes the Mercedes Benz sign. It just says. This is what we call the raffe. So one is there, one is there, and the other one is there. So if, I, if you could draw it in, one raffe is here, one is there, and the third is there. Okay. So this is when the valve close. Okay. So this is your non coronary, the right and the left. Okay. The tricuspid valve is over here. Your pulmonic valve is right there. This is the right ventricle, right ventricle flow track. This is the right ventricle up here. Tricuspid valve, this is the right atrium right here. Atrial septum, left atrium, okay? So let's put it, put it in play. Okay. Tricuspid valve. So this is the septal leaflet. The anterior leaflet is over there. And this is your tricuspid valve. I mean, this is your pulmonic valve. So you have to know the images. That, you know, you have to know how to label the, the different views, all the structures in the different views. Okay. So again, the pulmonic valve is over here. Tricuspid valve is there, right ventricle.
Okay, so the valve opens the triangular configuration. Okay. And it's important to know that because when we go on to congenital heart disease, you know, see when it closes, you have three cusps. You can see the raffe. These are called raffe. Okay. So it's important to know these things because if if you have a patient with two cusps or one cusp, it's not going to look like this. It's going to be different. And you need to know that. That's important. And of course, we put Doppler in everything. So Doppler is an integral part of echo, OK? So you, you, anything you need to get a better definition, you zoom it. So they enlarge it to, to see stuff. You need to see, is it really three cusp? OK. So again, we Doppler everything. So you're going to be tired of Doppler. You have to Doppler everything. Again, the Doppler is complementary to your two-dimensional studies. Okay. All right, so if you... This is looking more at the tricuspid valve, still short axis at the level of the aorta, but there's more concentration on the, on the tricuspid valve over there. And I guess that she's gonna do Doppler it, so again, we Doppler everything. So the next uh, teaching session is going to be on the evaluation of LV systolic function. So you need to know the views very, very well, because when we start doing evaluation of LV systolic function, we're going to assume that you, you know that. All right, so now this is short axis at the level, at the base. And when we said at the, the base, we're talking about the level of the mitral valve. So to get the, the, the level of the mitral valve, you're going to tilt the transducer, the, the angle of the transducer, you're going to tilt it up. Remember, to get the aorta, it was down. You know, you're going to gradually tilt the angle of the transducer up, upwards. And you're going to get 
short axis at the level of the mitral valve, the anterior leaflet is on top and the posterior leaflet is below. This is the anterior wall on top. This is the inferior wall. The lateral wall is over here, and this is the septum. Okay. So this is that we call this the base, and that's where the mitral valve is located. Now, this is at the level of the papillary muscle. So if you gradually tilt the angle of the transducer upwards a little bit more, you get the short axis at the level of the papillary muscle. This is the anterior lateral papillary muscle, posterior medial papillary muscle. Again, this is the anterior wall, inferior wall. This is the lateral wall, and this is the septum. Okay, so we'll put it in play. And systole, it comes in and diastole, it goes out. So this is the mid cavitary level. Okay, so you get to the base where you have the mitral valve. The mid cavitary level, you have the papillary muscles. And then to get the apex, if you tilt the angle of the transducer even further upwards, you get the apex. So this is one of the apex. The apex is smaller. Uh, this is the anterior wall on top, inferior wall, lateral wall, and this is the septum. Okay, put it in play. So you, when we do the short axis, you can see we have short axis at the level of the aorta, short axis at the level of the base, which is the the mitral valve. Short axis at mid cavitary level, where you have the papillary muscles, and then short axis at the apex. All right, so we go to our apical views. Apical views. So to get the apical four chamber view, you find the the junction, the junction, or the intersection of the mid cavicular mid cavicular line and the fifth intercostal space. If the patient's heart is enlarged, you're going to feel for the apex, and you're going to put the transducer at the apex of the heart. You can feel the pulsation. The marker is about the four or five o'clock position, and you're going to adjust it because. You know, putting it in that position, you're not automatically going to get an image looking like this. You have to make certain adjustments. You have to have in the back of you, back of your head, you need to know what image you're looking for. All right. So you're going to adjust your transducer and you're going to get something looking like this. Again, this is your LV cavity, left ventricular cavity. So your ventricular septum, the apex of the heart is here. This is the lateral wall. This is your mitral valve right inside here. Anterior leaflet of the mitral valve, posterior leaflet of the mitral valve. This is the left atrium, atrial septum, right atrium, right ventricle. Your descending aorta is someplace right there. So we'll put it in play. Okay. You have Pulmonary veins, one here, one there. This is the right upper and the left upper. You have to know the structures in the different views. Okay. In systole, you can see the heart moves in and diastole, it moves out. Okay. Apical four chamber view. And then, of course, we Doppler every single thing.
So you're gonna see we Doppler everything, okay? All right, so this is your apical four chamber view. Again, LV cavities right there. Your, sept your uh, ventricular septum, apex, the lateral wall, the mitral valve is inside there. This is the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve, the posterior leaflet of the mitral valve, left atrium, atrial septum, right atrium, right ventricle. And so we have color flow Doppler, we have pulse wave Doppler, we have continence wave Doppler. But this is another type of Doppler. We're not doing that. We're just looking at views. You can't do anything in echo unless you get the views. And the views have to be accurate because you'll see that when we start doing Doppler and other things, you, you see if your views are not accurate, then you can't really do anything. So concentrating and getting good images, good, good pictures is important. So these are all Dopplers, let's move on. So so from the apical four chamber view, this is the five chamber view, even though there is color there. This is the five chamber view. So from the, ape, the position that you get your apical four chamber view, you're gonna pull, pull the angle of the transducer downwards a little bit, and then you open the aortic valve. So you have one, two, three, four, five. That's how we call it, five chamber view, because now you open the aortic valve, you can see the ascending aorta in the aortic valve, okay? With the five chamber view, you still get your pulmonary veins, you, you have your descending aorta, and you can see the moderator band in the right ventricle. So the five chamber view, you can see the moderator band right up there. You, you open your aortic valve right there. So you can see the four chamber view, you close the aortic valve right there. So still your apical four chamber view. The heart should be standing vertically upwards. Also note that the tricuspid valve, as compared to the mitral valve, is lower in the ventricle, okay? You can see that the tricuspid valve is closer to the apex than the mitral valve. And that is one, one of the best ways 
way to distinguish the tricuspid valve from the mitral valve because it's it's lower it's lower it's placed lower in the ventricle than the mitral valve you can see Now, this is the two chamber view. To get the two chamber view, you're going to move the, your transducer counterclockwise. So, you need to know what is clockwise and what is counterclockwise. Something that moves clockwise moves in the same direction as the, the hands in the clock. Okay? It's going to move from left to right, left to right. Okay? So, the, 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 the the normal movement of the hands in the clock. That's clockwise. What we say counterclockwise is in the opposite direction. So you're going to move the transducer counterclockwise and you're going to get an image looking like this. This is the inferior wall. The anterior wall is right there. Apex, your mitral valve. Anterior leaflet is right there. Posterior leaflet. This is your left atrium. Okay. So your apical two chamber view, turning the transducer counterclockwise. Inferior wall, anterior wall, apex. And of course, we Doppler everything. So after you get your two chamber view, then you move to your three chamber view. To get the three chamber view, you're going to rotate the transducer further clockwise. So a little bit of clockwise, you get your two chamber view. A little bit more clockwise, you get your apical three chamber view. Three chamber because you have the LV, left atrium, and your aorta. Okay? So, uh, we, okay, this is your inferior lateral wall, and this is your anterior septal wall. We'll go over that, we'll go over walls. But this is your apical three chamber view. All right? Inferior. Uh, lateral, the apex is right there, anterior septal, your aortic, your your aortic root is right there. Well, it's it's right there. Your aortic root is right there. Your ascending aorta is right there. The aortic valve is right there. So just beyond the aortic valve is the root, and then your ascending aorta, the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve, posterior leaflet, and the left atrium. You guys have to know the views. You have to know the views, okay? Of course, we Doppler everything, so. So five chamber view. From the four chamber view position, you just pull the angle, the angle of the transducer downwards. And these are very small, minuscule movements. So this is our subcostal view. So sub, you put the transducer just below the xiphoid process, and you manipulate it. You can see that this is the liver over here. The right side of the heart is against the liver. The right ventricle is down here. Right atrium is up there. This is your ventricular septum, left ventricle, and the left atrium is right there. Put it in motion. Okay, you can see the tricuspid valve. The right atrium is above that. There's your atrial septum right up there. 
it's the liver over there. So you do, you rotate it a little bit more and you'll get your IVC, inferior vena cava, emptying into the right atrium. And you can also see the hepatic vein emptying to the inferior vena cava. Okay. So you can just manipulate it a little bit more. You see a little bit more of the ventricular septum and the atrial septum. We want to see the, you have to see the IVC clearly so you can measure it. It's, it's very important for you to see the IVC and to see the hepatic thing. Okay. So, so it's IV, but we're not seeing it clearly. So, you know, it's important to do whatever manipulation you have to do to see that IVC properly. Okay, so it's right inside there, but you have to do all the manipulation to see it properly and measure it. It has to be measured, okay? All right, so we we didn't do the, the only view that was not done was the supersternal notch view. Um, that should be done as well, okay? Uh, so that concludes um, this evening's session of um, scanning views. Okay, so again, it's very important for you guys to go over the views.